You know, I typically would actually be watching Dynamite right now and reviewing it when it's done. But the problem is, there is no reason for me to watch it. Because, good God, I have been wanting to make a video like this for weeks. It's been a couple months, and I think it's finally time to unleash the Kraken. What's going on, guys? Boss of me 6 here, back to another video, and today, I'm here to do a rant. And not about the WWE product this time. I'm talking about the AEW product. Why? Because if you guys remember back during the COVID era and we were going through the whole Thunderdome experience, I made, I think, two rant videos talking about the WWE product and how terrible it was back then. And while not everything has been perfect in the new era of WWE, with Triple H under being under creative, it's been at least accessible to the viewing eye. And again, while not everything has been perfect, the pay-per-views have been pretty damn good with the uh, latest offering of Saudi Arabia United Champions being, in my opinion, the best Saudi show they've ever done. And while I can't say that everything has been perfect, at least they have a creative direction. I cannot say the exact same thing that's happening down in Jacksonville because good Christ almighty. Look, I don't want this company to die, but at the same time, they are really, really running their wheels at this point because I almost have no words to say about this company right now because ever since the aftermath of All Out with Punk and the Elite and that whole shebang that happened, this company has been going downhill ever since. And... and in NFL terms, for all of us, you know, internet uh, marks out there, we call this thing called tanking, which basically is they're just losing every single time so that way they can rebuild themselves. That's what AEW is doing, but somehow they're failing at tanking because, good lord, I don't know what in the blue hell is happening most of the time when it comes to the show because... If you guys have seen my All Out review, or not my All Out review, my Double or Nothing review slash rant, that was kind of the final straw for me when it comes to reviewing Dynamite, because I swear to God, I I, don't, I almost don't want to watch this show or watch this company anymore, because it is so ungodly bad nowadays that it somehow makes the last couple of years of WCW look like, I don't know, like, well, what's a good comparison? Like, it's like, I'm trying, I can't even think of a good example. Like, this somehow makes, <clears throat> make, makes the late 90s WCW look Citizen Kane compared to what AEW's been doing. Because again, while WWE is far from perfect, at least, at the bare minimum, they have a, an idea of what they're doing. You cannot say the same thing with AEW, because they have no clue what they're doing. Because, there's a lot of points I'm going to be making here. So, bear with me if I'm going to be, you know, going off on a little tangent here and there. But, this is going to be a stressful labor for me, because I am almost sick and tired of this company. Because... I want this company to succeed. I want to support and praise the wrestlers that I really, really, really like. But I almost feel like I can't because they don't give us a reason to. Let's start off with a couple things. Let's talk about the championships and the champions. So, we're going to start like the very bottom of the barrel. The FTW title, the hook is currently carried. Don't, why is that title a thing now? Yeah, it was cool when Taz introduced it in 90... Uh, what was it, 99 or 98? When Shane Douglas uh, was injured and Taz couldn't challenge... Um, <clears throat> couldn't challenge for the title. But at the same time, why would you want to revitalize a title that was mainly to put Taz over? Like... The FTW title was kind of a joke, and it really didn't amount to anything when Taz lost it. It was mainly a title for Taz. 
but he's putting it on the son hook now. And now, speaking of hook, they really boggled, boggled him now because remember when people were comparing him to the next Goldberg? Here's the difference. At least Goldberg drew. And that's nothing against Hook. It's just, okay, you're over now. You, now you gotta worry. Now you gotta do it. Uh, nah, now you gotta get the crowd over by yourself. And that's kind of what they're trying to do here. And I don't understand. Another comparison I'm gonna be making is the TBS championship situation. Okay, Jake Cargill. And this is another Goldberg comparison I'm gonna be making. And it's not a knock, it's nothing like that. They were making, uh, they were trying to make Jay Cargill have this big streak and, you know, go undefeated and all that stuff. They were trying to give our Goldberg like run. Again, here's the problem. Goldberg drew and at least Goldberg had short matches. They are doing the same thing with Jade. Jade has a look. She looks like a million bucks. She is greater than goose shit. She is very green in the ring. She has her moments, and she is slightly progressed in the ring. But they are giving her so many long matches. Like, like a double or nothing, they gave her and uh, Taya Valkyrie almost 10 minutes. Jay can't go over more than three. And my voice is going to be sounding like Mickey Mouse. Ha -ha! But at the same time, you understand where I'm coming from here. You don't have Jade mo go more than three minutes. Give her two minutes tops, have the babyface get a little bit of offense on, but eventually she hits a pump kick and the Jaded, and there you go, she wins. Get in and get out. They're trying to make her like what they did with Goldberg and William Regal, and look how that turned out. That was horrible. Quit doing the same thing here with Jade. If she gets better in the ring, yeah, you may give her a little bit more time, but at the same time, it's like, Jesus Christ, she looks confused after three minutes. And I'm not trying to knock her as a person, it's just what I'm seeing. They aren't giving her, like, any, it feels like it's not, they're not giving her any time to fully progress in the ring because they're trying to push her so hard that she's going to crash and burn at the end. Also, TBS title situation, people complain about the World Heavyweight title in WWE, a secondary championship. At least the championship for right now is being featured prominently. This title, on the other hand, I almost forgot Jay was the, was the TBS title for a couple months until eventually she has the very brief pay-per-view match. Like, she... I can't... I, I honestly forgot who she faced at All Out. I, I really am struggling to figure out who she faced at All Out. And then she won against Hyatt Valkyrie at Double or Nothing. And now Chris Tatler is a world champion. And she's now facing Natal Rose with no build-up whatsoever. And that's going to be another criticism I'm going to get to here in a bit. Okay, so you have that happen. And then we get to the World Trio style, uh, the Trio Tag Title. <coughs> why is this thing... A, why, is this, why is this a thing? The only company that made a trio's title work was Lucha Underground. Even, even then, that had issues because there wasn't a whole lot of tag teams. But for the brief period, it worked because people bought into it and it was very engaging. It didn't work in the outset because of how messy and sloppy it get. But at least they were trying something new and they were sticking to the Lucha Libre uh, fans and style to it. There's almost no teams here when it comes to AEW. Like... Okay, cool. The Elite won, and then they lost it to House of Black. And, again, I said it before, and I'll say it again. The Elite, not the Elite, I'll get to them here later. The Acclaimed won a trio battle royal, and they've done nothing with them. You've been putting the House of Black on all these random-ass tag matches, and then at the pay-per-view, the Acclaimed suddenly get a title shot, and look what happened there. It was a glorified dynamite match. Despite the fact Caster's promo was pretty damn funny. The point is, there was no build. They had not one interaction, nor mentioned each other in any promos or anything like that. The Elite, or not the Elite, why do I keep saying the Elite? The Acclaimed were cooled as ice after their world title run. World tag title run. Please get rid of these titles. 
Number one, the International Championship. Orange Cassidy, who's one of the most overrated workers I've ever seen, and saying worker is a slight insult to people that actually want to put effort in the ring, is carrying the sportsless title. Now, Pac winning it a Forbidden Door last year was cool, even though in all honesty it should have been Miro. But okay, I'm curious to see what they were going to do with Pac. And look what happened there. They put it on the joke of a wrestler. Yes, Orange Cassidy is a joke. I don't want to hear otherwise. He can work same damn gimmick every single day. It gets tiring as hell. And this guy, I don't understand why he is so over. I don't get this. I don't get this gimmick, and I don't want to. And people say, "Oh, he's a genius." Okay, apparently putting pockets and doing the same stupid ass thing over and over again is apparently over. You can get yourself over in so many things in WWE and AEW and all these other companies. I don't get it. Scissor me daddy ass I get because it's funny and it's an inside joke and everyone's in on the joke. Cassidy I never get. And I never want to get. It's redundant. It's stupid. And oh my god. And now he's teaming up with... Darby Allen for God knows what. Because way to run, because you're just cooling off Darby Allen at this point for no reason. After you are putting him in a world title feud, that's how you're going to cool him off. Seriously. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to Ricky Starks? You know, he was in a you know, very brief feud with MGF for the title. And now he's working with Jay White and Juice Robertson. Good job, everyone. Way to cool off one of your bright young stars. Oh, jeez, Lord of mercy. And I feel like the biggest offender of someone being cooled off is Wardlow. You want to talk about a guy that the year previous, this dude was white shit. Hot shit when he, you know, finally got, finally done with uh, Max's nonsense. He turned face with the, with the punk angle. I'll talk about Punk here in a minute. And then MJF basically giving Wardle all this hell and finally Wardle powerbombing MJF 10 times in the ring. Damn good stuff. Wardle was white hot. Okay, you give him the TNT title. You give him the TNT title because Scorpio was dealing with an injury. Okay, fine. How many times do people remember Wardle's reign? Oh, yeah, that's right. Because no one did because he was teaming up with Samoa Joe for no reason. Why? You put so much hype into this guy, and that's what you do with him. That's the brief thing with AEW. And I apologize, folks. My producer is apparently very upset. I want to go see what's wrong with him. Sorry about that, folks. My producer wanted to go outside. She wanted to go see the folks. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Yeah, Wardlow was completely done. He's toast. Um, I, I It sucks saying that because he is a damn good talent, and he's very athletic for a guy his size. But they gave him the TNT title. They've been hot potato with him off the, with the title and off the title. And now he's in a feud with Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, and Art Anderson's with them for reasons. So, okay, have one, have one mid car title. Because at least with the Intercontinental and the U.S. title, at least they're both established. These titles aren't. Like, okay, you want to have a mid car title? Fine. Fine. That's completely fine if you want a mid car title. But don't contradict yourself by saying, we're not going to be having so many championships. You nearly have the same amount of titles that WWE does. And that's including ROH. Because ROH, yes, it's a different brand, but here's the problem. How many of those titles belong to AEW contracted wrestlers? 
Okay, let's see. World titles, Claudio Castanelli. Was he part of AEW? The Lucha Brothers, Ring of Honor Tag Champions. Who they belong to? AEW. I think the women's champion, I think, is still Athena. Granted, she's not an AEW that much, but guess what? She's still an AEW contract wrestler. Now, yes, Shibata won the pure title from Yuta, and I'm pretty sure that's it. I think the only other team is the Gates of Agony and the Embassy, and those people are AEW contract wrestlers themselves. So, that's basically all of your champions right there. Not to mention Samoa Joe's the world television champion, and he was an AEW. So what's the point of saying you're not going to have that many titles if you're going to have almost the same amount of titles as WWE does? And that's including all the brands, SmackDown, Raw, and NXT. It's ridiculous. Stop contradicting yourselves with it if you're going to say you're not going to have as many world titles as the other company you're supposedly wanting to have a war with. And you're having the same amount of titles as the same company you're wanting to have said war with. And also, I want to quickly mention that, folks. To all of you AEW fanboys out there, there is no war. WCW versus WWE and the Money Night Wars died in 1999. That was 14 years ago. Actually, no, 24 years ago. We're nearly 25 years later and people are saying, oh, WWE is going to get smoked by AEW. They don't have a chance. Okay, yes, in the pandemic era, but look at where AEW is at and look at where WWE is at in 2022 and 2023. Look at the ratings. I would, I would rather watch the Jacksonville Jaguars than watch this team. Because at least with Jacksonville, at least there's people I like on that team. And not to mention, they were actually winning in a game and actually winning at life in some capacity other than AEW. Because Tony Khan, for the love of Christ and Jiminy Jesus, for the love of God, get a creative team. You can't run everything by yourself. You have a wrestling company. You partially own a football team. You have a soccer team. You're, I think you have another wrestling promotion you're running. And so much other nonsense, you can't do it by yourself. To quote Scott in the Shadow Coke podcast, there's not enough Coke in Herb Abrams' ass that Tony Khan would do that would make his product a lot better. Because as much as we love to whine and complain about WWE's inept, inept confidence, at least they have a creative direction. With AEW, it's like a violent schizophrenic ex of yours on drugs and trying to force you out of a good relationship. That's basically what they're doing here. They are trying to blue ball every single company and to brainwash all these people to saying that WWE is inferior to AEW. Guess what, folks? You can like AEW and WWE simultaneously. What? What a revolutionary concept. It's like in the 90s. You can like WCW in WWE simultaneously. I like both companies and I like to criticize both companies. Just because I praise one company doesn't mean I automatically don't with the other. If I'm going to praise WWE, I'm going to praise AEW. If I'm going to praise New Japan, I'm going to praise Impact. So on and so forth. If I'm going to criticize WWE, I'm going to criticize AEW. If I'm going to criticize New Japan, I'm going to criticize Impact. So on and so forth. Just because I like all these companies does not automatically mean I'm going to give the to all of them. And the people that have made so many slanderous allegations saying, Oh, I am a WWE dick writer. I praise Triple H and all his creative genius. Folks, I'm not a huge Triple H fan to begin with. Like, I'm glad he survived his cardiac arrest. And while, yes, the product has been more watchable than under Vince, I'm not going to say sit here and say I'm a Triple H mark. I'm not. I'm more of a Shawn Michaels guy, and even Shawn isn't that great. At least when it comes to running creative, because one eye is running NXT, and the other, 
The other eye is looking at the exit door. The point is, I'm not going to like, if I'm going to like a company, I'm going to bash it as well. Like, I like Lucha Underground, but when season three and especially season four hit, I feel like that's when the company was running on low and not to mention all the creative talents were gone. Like Puma, AKA Ricochet was gone. Um, Penta and Phoenix, they were going to impact and so many others. They had Jake Hager, Jack Swagger, Jake Strong, whatever the hell you want to call him as their final world champion. That right there is a testament as to how, ungodly inept that Dario Cueto can be sometimes. And I like Dario Cueto, don't get me wrong. And not to mention, but Todd Cueto, a.k.a. Jeff Cobb was going, Johnny, um, Johnny Elite, or whatever the hell he's calling him nowadays, Sean Morrison, he was going, Ty Valkyrie was going, all these big stars were going, and Lucha Underground had to close the doors and not have a final season. Now it's part of MLW, which I don't watch, um, but I do acknowledge talent when I see it. The point is, I don't understand what this company is trying to do. I'm going to set a thing for myself. Now the collision is in Chicago, and that the Grandmaster himself, CM Punk, is back. Oh, yay! Punk is back, everyone! Everything is going to go back to normal. That's what Tony Khan thinks. Tony... Just because you have your biggest star there, and yes, Punk is their biggest star, folks, that does not automatically mean that everything is going to go back to where it was. Because, as much as I love Phil, he is a masochist. He is a hypocrite. He's all of these nasty things you want to call him. However, Punk was not entirely wrong when he said it all out during the media scrum. Because... The place is being run by children. Is he wrong? Not really. Look at the Elite. Look at the Bucks. Look at Omega. Page to a certain extent, but not really. He's kind of mature in his own right. Because Tony Khan doesn't know how to be a boss. He wants to be everyone's friend, get all these little toys in the sandbox, and not want to get rid of them. Well, those toys are going to be so old and fragile that at some point they will not want to be usable, but Tony Khan doesn't want to get rid of them. And Tony ain't really that smart of a fella either. Just look at his comments on Big Swole and some other maybe racially in charged um, things that he said about other people. Yeah, you're not going to bring Hulk Hogan into AEW, but you're going to allow Sabu to come in. If you don't believe me, look at the stuff he said about John Moxley's wife and Moxley himself. And not only that, but also the JR. Speaking of which, JR is... Does not care anymore. He really does not care. Um, he's really there for a paycheck. And also, one can blame him. Not that much he likes to make horny comments, which I think was pretty damn funny in, in some instances. But can you blame JR? No! Because he's tired of it. He's tired of the war not controlling the inmates. Because that's what this company is. It's being run up by someone that doesn't know how to be a boss. Because Tony... You gotta put your foot down at some point. And enough of the nonsense drama. Step up and be a boss. Be an asshole. Be a prick. Have an ego every once in a while. That's why Vince was a good boss for a little bit. Good golly, Miss Molly. There's a couple other big points I want to talk about. The MJF situation. Because this is your world champion. And... He feels like an afterthought. You were making him red hot when he came back and you won the title for Moxley. And yet, you're letting him thinking about wanting to walk out. You're letting him wanting to walk out of your company. Don't believe me? Watch what he said the media scrum because that was one of the best interviews I've ever seen, you know, shoot or not shoot. What MJF said is completely true. There is no lie that MJF has said during that media scrum. It's, it, it's all true. It is. And Tony Khan is sitting there with his, 
you know, with his angry bird eyebrows and not wanting to goddamn blink, ain't doing nothing. I don't get it. Tony Khan is going to burn so many bridges to a point he's going to accidentally want to burn the entire Golden Gate Bridge on fire and it's going to bite him in his ass. Because, just because you got punk back does not automatically mean everything's going to be okay. Because, I'm willing to bet if this collision experiment is going to go the same thing with Rampage, I hate to tell you folks, but I told you so. I hate being right. I really do. But I have a feeling collision is going to go with the buffalo that Rampage was. Because remember when Punk showed up at Rampage and that was the highest rating that that show has ever gotten? Collision is going to have the same thing and once Punk is not there, no one's going to care. Because it's going to be another AEW show. If collision happens, you got to get rid of Rampage. That's it. Just get rid of Rampage. Because... I'm, I almost don't want to review it, uh, Dynamite because I watched a little bit of tonight's Dynamite and I was completely out of interest because it, I just don't care. And I don't have a reason to care. Call me bitter all you want. I really don't care. I've been bitter for years, folks. I just never did it on camera. I, I, I'm just done with it. I'm tired of all the bulls. I'm tired of all the bullshit. I want to see a good dynamite. I'm in the mood. I'm in the same like mindset that Brian Alvarez and Vinny was when they were reviewing uh, TNA back in uh, 2010. They wanted to see a good impact. I want to see a good dynamite. I want to see a good pay-per-view. I want to see a good rampage. Is that going to happen? Maybe when Tony Khan wakes up and smells the flowers one day. But one day he's going to smell one of the bad roses and he wants to cut the damn thing off with its head. I make all these, I make some of these rants on sha on the Shadow Club podcast and looking back, they're pretty damn funny. And thankfully we're playing Cards Against Humanity this week. And we're going to relieve, hopefully, some of the stress that this company has been giving me. <sighs> Not to mention, they completely ruined uh, Kanosuke Dikesha's momentum. They, they completely ruined him by having him with uh, Don Callis. Um, you ruined a future star. Good job, everyone. Uh, you know, round of applause, everyone, because good sweet Christ. I'm sorry the Elite are not good. Uh, this whole BCC feud has been terrible. They're implementing the Dark Order now because we can't have nice things. Um... I'm trying to think of it every other bad thing about this show because there are some talent here. I want to like this show. I want to love this company. But all the backstage, all the backstage drama and the um on the product has been terrible. It's been terrible. The women's situation, I almost forgot to bring that up. The women's situation is abhorrent. It is, f oh my God, it is the definition of a failed abortion because this, oh my God. For those of you who don't know, so Thunder Rosa, who's been out with an injury for almost a year, she made a comment on her Instagram story talking about her back injury and talking about how she's been going through su some suicidal situations where she's been having suicidal thoughts all this stuff, and she wanted to do all that stuff. First off, if you're ever going through that, folks, please talk to me. Even if we're not friends, talk to me because I am willing to help. Second of all, that's how you want to lead a women's division, Soraya and Britt. Gee, I wonder what kind of situation this reminds me of. Oh, yes, Britt and Sean from 96. That's the same vibe I'm going for. Because those two women are barking each other, eventually one of them is going to bite. And I will believe Thunder Rosa will beat Britt's ass in a real fight. Because, yeah, Britt, slander the woman that's been putting you on top for about a year. Slander the woman that's been making you the biggest star, the, the biggest you're ever going to get. Yeah, don't, don't acknowledge, no praise 
special or anything. It's not like Thunder Rosa is the best w worker in your company right now. Oh, God, no. We might, we're going to slander her because she wants to sandbag people. Let's slander her for God knows what. Jesus Christ, Brit, you are really starting to make yourself unlikable. You really are. And I did, I did praise her for a while. But all this stuff coming out, coming out about her, talking about how she's been kind of a bitch, I'm really starting to believe that. Because it feels like in some ways she's going to be a sunny, and that's not going to be good. I hate saying that. Well, not to mention Britt really hasn't slept around with any other men, and she hasn't killed anyone and gotten drunk so many times that she made an inebriated alcoholic seem sober. But besides the point, just why? Why? Just have someone run your women's division. Because Jamie Hayter is not the champion anymore. Tony Storm is. Uh, Tony Storm hasn't mean anything in months. Soraya is there because we can't have nice things. Because Soraya deserves a lot of television time. Except she doesn't. Because she is very unlikable. If you don't believe me, just look at the men she likes to date. And defend. Ronnie Radke. Alberto El Patron. Yes, the whole sex tape stuff with Brad Maddox and Xavier Woods. Yeah, that was completely stupid. And whoever leaked those tapes is an asshole. But... Soraya has not really been too kin when it comes to that stuff because she is slandering the company that was making her able to walk. She's going to paralyze herself in the ring and no one's going to care and no one's going to feel bad for her. We want to, you know, wake up, smell the roses and touch the grass. Bitch, wake up and smell the roses and touch the grass. Because the man you're sleeping with has a laundry list of criminal charges against him who should be locked up and is in one of the most overrated bands this side from Motionless and White. And for anyone that's saying he's sex appeal, I'm guessing you said the same thing about Jeffrey Dahmer when he was going after little kids. The point is, I don't hate the show. But there are so many times that I want to question and not pull my brain cells out and lose all of my cellulites and all of my chromosome for all I care. Because there are so many things that are making this company unlikable. Like Chris Jericho and the Jasshole Society and all these stupid ass, stupid factions. This company could piss off sometimes. Anyways, I still have a lot of stuff that I want to say, but frankly, I don't want to waste anyone's time on this stupid channel. But anyways, folks, thank you guys so much for watching this video because I've been wanting to get this stuff off my shoulders for months. And if you expect to see me doing our rant and maybe in about two more, you'll understand why. So, TLDR. If Rampage, if Dynamite is going to be good, I'm going to review it. If not, I'm not going to waste my time with it. And no, I'm not saying the same thing for Raw because honestly, Raw really hasn't done anything for me. And while I want to see the show, I've been really trying to not really distract myself. It's just that I kind of want to spend a little more time with some of the people that I really care about. So... Yeah, that's why I haven't really been reviewing Raw. Even though I've been hearing some of the shows were pretty damn good. I heard this past one was actually pretty solid. So, yeah. I will be doing Dynamite. I will be doing AEW related stuff. But probably not as often as you guys would like to be. So, till the show actually starts being good, maybe. But until then, probably not for a little bit. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. This was a therapy session for yours truly. So, what do you guys think about this video? Make sure you guys leave a like, leave a comment, tap that big red subscribe button, and tap the bell so when I upload, you guys will certainly be notified. I cannot wait to get all the hate mail in my inbox. So, bring it on, fanboys. Bring it on. Just bring it. Of course, like always, most importantly, join the herd. I'll talk to you guys next video. Peace out.